It's capped at 21 million, meaning it's a deflationary currency, which means by design, by the code design, it is only designed to go up in value. Thanks for listening to the Great Ave Podcast. Great Podcast. We meet inspiring people from around the world. gentlemen we are preparing to make our final descent into the gray avenue the local time is what it is and the temperature is good degrees this is where curious minds entrepreneurs daredevils hustlers and problem solvers converge on your left is the world of productivity and success home of the unicorns themselves for your safety and comfort please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captain turns off the fastened seatbelt sign on behalf of the entire crew, I'd like to thank you for listening to the Gray Ave Podcast. We are also on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Rate and write us a review. You can also download each episode on www.grayjabesi.com. Enjoy the show. Hey, what's up, guys and girls? My name is Gray, and this is another episode of the Gray Avenue Podcast. And today, we actually having a continuation of my chat with Peter Saddington, aka Deutsch Lord, as well uh, as known as Bite Size Bitcoin on YouTube. So uh, last week we talked about startups, Scrum, uh, Agile, and a couple of other important things. And if you missed that episode, I do recommend that you go back and check it out. Uh, I mean, Peter is an expert in um, management and Scrum, especially he has wrote two books about it, which you can check out the link in the description. And like you know, he is an investor in cryptocurrencies. He invested in Bitcoin when it was only $2 in 2000 and 2011. And as I speak, it is uh, worth 4000 $300 per Bitcoin. So Peter is involved in, uh, with uh, Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies, as well as in the mining game. Uh, and he has a community. He has a website, the Bitcoin Pub, which is one of the uh, largest and the fastest growing cryptocurrency communities right now. So I have, we have talked about cryptocurrency um, I think on two episodes with Paul Dinin, both of them. And if you haven't, uh, if you're still like not sure what this whole Bitcoin thing is, you can go back and check those out. But um, I think this one will also give you uh, a good look at it uh, from an investor who went in when it was, you know, during the early stages when it was really, really cheap and is involved. And he shares a lot of um, strategies as far as investing in this kind of things or just if you want to understand exactly what this whole thing is uh, i shared on the previous video maybe or i'm sorry on the previous episode that i'm also trying to get into this it's a fast growing economy there's a lot of going on i'm doing a couple of things in there myself so i think it's important that i cover this kind of subject and some of you guys can get in so I started a YouTube channel as well. It's called Hardcore Crypto on YouTube, where I discuss uh, cryptocurrencies. I, you know, it's pretty much like a daily vlog on what's going on and all these kind of things. Which I'd recommend that you check it out if you want to get started. Um, you can also subscribe to Peter's YouTube channel, Bad Size Bitcoin, where you can learn a lot more things as well. So in this episode, Peter shared about cost averaging as a strategy of investing in cryptocurrency, which is totally awesome. And I asked him questions like, what, is, what does he think is the most boring thing on the planet? And his answer was totally, totally awesome. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm sure you're going to pick up something from that. And uh, he explained to me the best way to explain hard concepts um he gave me a good answer for that which i picked up in the circumstances where i ask him okay i struggle to explain to people what bitcoin is to the level that they can understand it as a technology so he gave me a very good answer which will simplify your understanding as well if you haven't uh, gotten around it 
and how to create a community because he has been good at that. He, he's built um, the Bitcoin pub and he has an, a very active uh, community on YouTube where there's lots of views when he's doing his live streaming videos. So guys, this is important. I personally believe that the next economy is online and most of us should actually have um, our own asset on the internet somehow guys somehow okay so I, I hope that this kind of give you an outlook on what's going on out there as well in case you haven't been paying attention all right guys thanks for listening uh, as always uh, remember to subscribe to the podcast if you want to learn more things about what's going on if you're on my list i'll send you podcast episodes every week as soon as it's published and i'll be sharing other things as well as well as i send you questions on okay i have this kind of guest coming in do you want to uh, ask him something then you will be able to send me those questions and you can do this many ways you can subscribe from my um, from my website as well as um, soundcloud or itunes it's all the Grey Ave podcast. Okay, guys, thanks for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Enjoy my conversation with Peter Saddington, a.k.a. Dodge Lord. Sure. So did you make your first million in Bitcoin, if I may ask? <laughs> We're going to start with an explosion here. <laughs> um, I, I bought... I bought a lot of Bitcoin in 2011 at two dollars. So let's just we'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, I, Piero, you, I, you're dodging. I, 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 you're being the I, Dodge Lord. Yeah, you're dodging. I am, I am. I am being the Doge. I am the Doge Lord. I'm. I'm dodging the question. Um, uh, I have a basically a philosophy around that uh, the government can't tax what they don't know that you have. So I. Ah, I dude, you're smart, brother. I like it. Now I'll uh, add I'll add that to my tally as well. Okay, I, don't kiss and Should tell. never tell anyone how much Bitcoin you own. You can tell people how much Neo or OMG or <laughs> Ethereum you have, but uh, Bitcoin you should never tell anyone how much Bitcoin you have. Great. So you start. You bought at two dollars. Uh, I bought a. I bought so much. I bought so much. Gray. It was awesome. <laughs> but, well, what What were you thinking at that time? It was this was two thousand seven, right? In 2011, 2011. 2011. So okay. um, I just got uh, I just got lucky. I read a, I read an, a, a news article about Bitcoin. Um, I'm a technologist. I mean, I mm. developed code. I thought it was cool. It was cheap. Um, I had some extra income, and I was like, this seems like it's something that I can build on. Uh, looking at the white paper and the open source, I was like, this is cool. I could actually make maybe my own coin, and I, and so I, I bought a lot of it, and I basically just left it alone, um, and. I had my real awakening in Bitcoin in 2014 when it hit $250. Uh, when Bitcoin hit $250, I went, I remember, I remember like it was yesterday. I was up in my condo on the 43rd floor uh, of, of the place I was living. And I remember seeing the price at 250 and I remember getting, I was like, what, what, what is this? What is, this? I remember get, getting out all my notes, all my papers, cause this was, we, we did it all on paper back then. And I, I was like, how much do I own? How much is it worth now? I was like, oh. I, I remember, I remember running, doing like seven or eight laps around my <laughs> condo. I was just like running around. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, oh, what, what is it? What is? Oh, that's, that's in 2014 is when I really got serious. Really, I really put my scientific brain towards it because I was like, this is actually worth something. This is actually doing something now. Maybe I should really get involved. And so I've only really been heavily involved in Bitcoin for about three and a half years now, but I've been invested uh, for about seven. Wow. So, well, I, th I guess because of your uh, scientific background and like you were good, you said you, you write software and stuff. I guess that's that could be the reason that you, you didn't sell, right? Because most people would have sold at that moment. I mean, yeah, something I that mean, you forget I mean, about, you forget about, and then you're like, oh, 250. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I did just basically forget about it, and I was lucky enough to still hold on to a lot of the keys and all that stuff. I think there's a, I, I, I won't lie to you and tell you that I haven't lost. I've lost, I've lost some along the way, uh, with some hacks and, just say Mount Gox and stuff like that. Mm. Oh, but. Shit. Um, but the the original amount was was awesome. 
The original amount was awesome. But yes, I have lost Bitcoin. I've never sold. I've never sold a uh, Bitcoin for fiat. I've only intercoin traded. So I've to never sold point. a Bitcoin. To, even to this day, I've never sold a Bitcoin for fiat. I've only used profits off of my Bitcoin to inter intercoin exchange. Uh -huh. But I've never sold a Bitcoin, not ever. Right. And then what made you to start, um, maybe before we get into that. Now, do you mine as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Have you, have, have you, come on, brother. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen you in the, in your, in your, kind of in your, you know, in your data yeah, so, center. So we I, have, we have an office, we have an office off site where we have, we have about, let's just say $50,000 plus dollars worth of miners, custom mining rigs that are mining 24 seven. So, you know, when I tell people that the mission and vision of, you know, the crypto nation, the mission and vision of the Bitcoin.pub is to spread the good word of Bitcoin and blockchain to all the world. That's absolutely what I'm doing. I am sure. in, I am involved in every facet of cryptocurrency, from investing to trading to building applications, building coins, building mobile apps, building infrastructure, mining, uh, full nodes. I mean, every aspect of cryptocurrency I'm involved in because this is the place that I want to be. Awesome. So how did you come up with the whole team to actually surround this whole environment? I know you can develop, you can probably build rigs on your own, but like, how do you get the whole team to, I mean, it's, you have, um, when I was doing my research, there's like a, a FinTech group, right? Is that what yep. you guys are called? Yeah. Yeah. Like, FinTech. How did you put that all together and how many guys are you uh, or are involved? Well, it, it's it, right now it's just really me and my brother who are building all the applications and infrastructure for the bitcoin.pub and the mobile apps and the coin i have another partner named chris uh and he helps he helped me build the mining rigs and so i met him uh at, interestingly enough at a chuck e cheese's like restaurant mm -hmm. and we were talking about video games and he was telling me that he knows how to build mining rigs and i was like well i i, I want to do that stuff too mm -hmm. and so we ended up growing a friendship and he's helped me build the mine the miners uh, but it's just through you know the network effect of meeting lots of people and figuring out how to use our skills and talents together to create the startup and to create this business that we have now. Um, but it's it's we have a huge a huge partnership network, but our really our core team is very small. Uh, so it's 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 about it's about it really is about like, executing as fast as possible. And frankly, with the, the with less people, you can execute faster. So right, we want to keep it small as small as we can. You know, this is an interesting space because I just got into this recently, you know, uh, over just a year now in, in, in cryptos. But like right. there's a lot of right opportunity time. and a lot of things going on. I mean, I have, I've been here for a small amount of time now, I have clients, uh, you know, a few guys working on ICOs and all these kind of things. I'm like, oh, wow. So now I'm just trying to move my whole economy down to crypto, you know, in maybe like 75% down into crypto, then the 25% some other things out there do it yeah yeah so definitely i'm spreading the word you know we need more Good. people into the crypto nation absolutely man we yeah. want every all, all your podcast people man if y'all y'all haven't bought bitcoin what are you doing please let you them know to, let them know let them know <laughs> you need to you need to go to the bitcoin.pub you need to continue to listen to my man gray sure. buy bitcoin because i tell you bitcoin is only going up it's only going up. It's 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 based on mathematical principles that cannot be hacked. It's capped at 21 million, meaning it's a deflationary currency, which means by design, by the code design, it is only designed to go up in value, which means you should buy, and you probably, Gray, you know my three rules of Bitcoin. Number one is buy Bitcoin now. Number two, buy it at cost. Number three, hold it. Hold it sure. for the long run. Hold it for the long run. So buy Bitcoin now, buy it at cost, and hodl or hold it for the long run, and you'll make good money. Sure. Now let's jump into altcoins, right? Ah, uh, altcoins. Yeah, a lot of people come into this game. Uh, you know, re this is one of the reasons that I actually started a YouTube channel. There are a lot of people like myself who are late in Bitcoin. I mean, I bought it. You're not was. late. If you've been in it for a year, you're newer than most, frankly. You're pretty much, yeah. But then, you know, there are a lot of people still coming up. They don't know where to start. So I created a YouTube channel to do that. And yep. also because there are a lot of cats coming in and they don't really do the research. 
You know, there's yeah. kind of a, a hype nation around it, and they're just like, oh, coming all head in, throwing money yeah. anywhere, you know, on altcoins, on their program, sure. like, like like BitConnect, for example. I made a video two days ago saying it's a scam, warning people. And <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, for, what do you think of things like those, like uh, like BitConnect? What are your thoughts? Because to me, well, there's there's no tangible. I, I couldn't find the founders of the company. I don't know where it is. I mean, the basics of uh, a company. To me, it's just well, not there. I, I think we have to realize two things. Number one, that we are still in the nascent and new uh, timeline of this technology. Sure. So if we look at you know the internet bubble uh, as an example, or uh, you know as as an example, most of these ICOs are going to pop. Okay, they're not going to last. Number two, we also have to remember that part of this new and nascent world of cryptocurrency, this is a startup world, which means 98% of fail. all those startups are gonna fail. Yeah. The only, and this is for your audience's edification, the only coin in the world that is statistically and empirically proven for eight years now is Bitcoin, all right, about seven years now, is Bitcoin. So. You know, Bitcoin isn't sexy, it's not exciting, but if you buy it, it'll make you a lot of money. You just have to hold it for a long time. Um, altcoins come and go. I find altcoins to be exceptionally fun to invest in, especially if you do the research. Yeah. Uh, I, I find that there's some really interesting problems that could be solved, not can be, but could be solved if they actually execute appropriately. Uh, but you know, I don't put a whole lot of stock in ICOs. I don't put a whole lot of stock in new altcoins. Uh, frankly, I don't. Inv I don't invest. You, you probably knew this. I don't invest yeah. in ICOs. It's just not. It's. I'm not a. I'm not of the type of person that is willing to risk money on something that basically is, in many ways, vaporware. Yeah, sure, <laughs> vaporware. I like that. Uh, it is. So, in, for example, if you're trying to trade. Look, I know your trading strategy. You know, you uh, you put some incremental values over time, and then that yeah, you're, cost, you're, cost you're, averaging. Absolutely, and then you have a sell point, right? Um, yep. Could you just explain how that works for people who want to get into uh, altcoins? Because I get asked that, like, oh, what do we do? Um, and I'm not t the type of person to day trade. I'm more of an investor. You know, I like to yeah. invest, and then I can chill, do my other stuff, and then I just so, so, watch the value grow. So the main way that yeah, yeah. So the the main way that I make money in the cryptocurrency market is called cost averaging. And what cost averaging is, is setting a small amount of money that you will put into the market regardless of price, week in, week out, every week. So for me, I, I for example, I buy Litecoin every Friday. I buy Bitcoin and Litecoin every Friday like clockwork. I don't care what the price is. And, I'll, and, and I actually did a video um, you can go back to my YouTube channel and find the video where I've, I've put, you know, 100 bucks into Charlie Lee or 50 bucks into Charlie Lee every week, every week, every week, every week, every week. And I invested about $3,100 and, and Litecoin made me like $15,000 over that period of time. And so a $3,000 investment, $15,000 gain. Fantastic. I mean, it's, 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 it's fantastic. That's yeah. fantastic. So cost averaging is a great way to just set it um set it and let it go it's like hey you know every month or every week i'm just going to put on this amount amount of money into the market and with cryptocurrency it works exceptionally well so i just cost average everything except when there's a huge dip like we had with bitcoin where i smashed twenty thousand dollars into it because i just want more bitcoin <laughs> oh yes my twenty grand right now yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I bought, I bought, Bit, I bet, I bought ten grand of, of Bitcoin at thirty eight hundred, and then I bought ten grand of Bitcoin at thirty two hundred. So, you know, it went down and it's coming back up, but I don't, I don't care. I just, I want to buy as much Bitcoin as I can because I am a true believer. When you see Bitcoin go from two dollars to five thousand dollars, I mean, for no, sure, no, <laughs> any price is cheap. Any price is cheap. I'll yeah. buy it at forty eight hundred because I know it's only going to go up higher. Sure. And um, now I have some quick questions here. Sure. Before we close, favorite city in Africa? Favorite city in Africa? For sure. Favorite Better believe city this. In Africa. Favorite city in Africa? Well, oh man, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, I, I haven't been to Africa, so I wouldn't know, man. Jeez, Dutch Lord, six points deducted. I <laughs> 
Jeez, um, I've, been to all, I've been to every continent except Africa. Um, so Africa is one of those places. Wait, have I been to Africa? No, I have not. Dude, I live, uh, I, I live I, in I, Cape Town. I, when you have time, you definitely got to check it out. It's one of Cape the most Town amazing. Is one, of the, one of those cities I definitely want to check out. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say Cape Town. Right. So question number two, if you had to go back a certain age, which one would it be? If I would, if I could go back to a certain age, I would go. Oh. That's a tough question because at every age I did something really special. Like, huh. you know, I, you know, at, at, I, 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 mar I married my wife when I was in my mid twenties, so I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't <laughs> want to do that again. I mean, I, I would, I would want. <laughs> <laughs> that I, didn't come out right. <laughs> I, 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 I would want to do that again. Um, so I would want to make sure that that happens. I would say I'd go back to like 20, I guess 25, 26 years old or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's when I, you know, was with my wife. Um, and I would if I knew what I knew now, then certainly I'd make better decisions on my startups for sure. Right. And what is, what do you consider the most boring thing in the world to you? The boring thing in the world? Mm. Wow, what a great question. I've never thought of that. What's the most boring thing in the world? I think the most boring thing in the world is uh, the media. Yeah, sure. Like the main, news main, and all this kind of main, thing. Mainstream media is, it's just, it's not even boring. It's just crap. It's just crap. Like, I, uh, there's no point in watching mainstream media. It's just a bunch of propaganda. Yeah, I haven't watched television. I haven't owned the television for four years, right? And I still don't believe why people do, like, why do people watch television? It's crazy if you see it, right? That's, that's because all these full-time employees working nine to fives need to have another distraction yeah. after they get, get home, Absolutely. Uh, being propagandized to. And then, you know, there's just more fear after fear than they don't want to leave the jobs because everybody's like, oh, jobs are scarce now. You know, the, the job level just went down. <laughs> Some crazy it's, shit it's, like that. Mainstream media is only about fear. That's all it is, is making sure that you're scared so you yeah. don't do anything. And you just buy things you don't need. Um, now I'm going to ask uh, the Peter Two question. My man is woke. Man is <laughs> For woke. sure, you have to be woke. <laughs> My man, I'm going to ask you the Peter Two question. Um, okay. What is it that you believe the most that most people don't agree with you on? You probably have heard this from Peter Two. What do I... What do I, yeah, I have. What you have read zero to one, right? Yeah, what do I believe the most that most people disagree with? Mm. I believe that the vast majority, actually, I believe that hu humans by design are wholly irrational creatures. Um, and I think there's a lot of people out there who try to argue for the rationality of humans. Uh, I believe that we are intrinsically irrational and we live in a fractal world. Uh, I get that from Benoit Mandelbrot, who, is a, uh, who studied fractal geometry. Um, and so we live in such a fractal and un, you know, variable system in this world that any type of real analysis on what's gonna happen in the future is comp completely futile. And so I believe that we have to just figure out how to work with irrational people, even though I don't, you know, when I, when I meet someone, I don't tell them, hey, you're pretty much irrational all the time. But uh, but most people are pretty irrational. I think there's a good argument that can be made for that. <laughs> totally. And the next one is any advice you could give to your previous boss, but you never had any. So. Well, I, I mean, I did work. I worked for Johnson and Johnson uh, out of college. I worked for Johnson and Johnson. I was a I was a Java developer for them for a while. Mm -hmm. So that I I did do corporate America, and then I realized I didn't want a boss. Uh, but it, there was one thing I can go back and tell my boss, my my old boss. Mm -hmm. I would tell him to stop smoking so much. He smoked like a chimney. He smoked like two two, two packs a day. I'm Do all smokers out there? Do all smokers out there? You gotta stop that shit, man. It's killing. Stop. I know. There's no need for it, guys. Right. And the greatest regret, if you have any. Oh, I do not have any regrets. I have lived a full, balanced, healthy, and wealthy life, a purpose-driven life. Um, I regret nothing because everything that I've done has has helped me become. The person I've become today uh, so I regret nothing there's nothing to regret man everything's good right so I'm gonna ask you a personal question to a sure. to like to something that I'm trying to work out over here I'm trying to, to create like a crypto uh, kind of nation here this side you know oh. because we don't want to be left behind brother we have to we have to go we need to move yeah. we need to move together all right 
Oh, yo, all the way. Oh, but in, there's a challenge to. I'm not the greatest person to. I find it very hard to explain things to people who d do not know anything about something. You know, it's like if if I have to explain the concept of Bitcoin to some people, they have seen ads online all over the place. And to some people, it's, it, it seems like it's a pyramid scheme because there are people giving out master classes or some bullshit like that. So, yep. I, like, how could I could I approach those kind of people? And I'll give you the short answer. I'll give sure. you the answer. Sure. It'll it'll work for you in any area of your life that you're trying to explain to people. Right. Do not try to explain what something is. It's right. just too much work. The only thing that, that you will be the best at mm -hmm. is telling people a story about how that thing affected you personally. Oh, That is far more compelling, number one. But number two, it will roll off your tongue easier because it's something that you actually experienced. And it's sure. easy to go back and tell a story rather than say, well, here's the abstract of what Bitcoin is. Here are the fundamentals and the technicals of why it works. Here's why it's important philosophically. And here's the architecture of what makes it you know, work. And it's just too much work. The best way to explain any, anyone, anything to anyone is tell them a story about that idea and how that's changed you. Because what they're what they're asked when when they are when they are working with you and, and you're in a position to help them understand something, they will put more trust in your story than the abstract. And so you just tell them how Bitcoin changed your changed your life. That's how I do it. Mm -hmm. When people ask me, hey, what is Bitcoin? I don't go into hey, Bitcoin's you know it's a based on mathematical principles and it's all <laughs> you know and it's, that's too much. Mm -hmm. I just tell them on a one on one basis. I just tell them, hey, this is how Bitcoin changed my life. And this is how Bitcoin made my life fuller. This is how Bitcoin made my life better. And if you trust me, if you trust me, and you know enough about my life, then you know I ain't lying. Yeah, dude, I mean, you just solved it. <laughs> now I got that notion. I'm gonna give stories now. Story time, guys. Bitcoin changed my life. I mean, haven't you heard me on stream, man? I just tell yeah, stories. for sure. I just tell stories, man. But uh, what have you learned in creating a community? Because, well, I'm, I'm, I, when I started my own channel, the whole idea, like I told you, is like to get together a number of people who are just getting into it. So, you right. know, and have friends. I don't have friends. I'm sad. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay. Um, but, but, the, but, best but, way, the best way to create a community is you have to find your own, what we call product market fit. Hmm. And what product market fit means, who am I? What market likes people like me? Hmm. And how can I, how can I uh, utilize my skill sets in that particular market? Let me give you an example. Mm. I I am not a good product market fit for basketball. I'm not tall. I can't shoot. So that's yeah. a bad product market fit. I'm also bad product market fit for like a marketer or a sales guy or like mm. a manager. It's just not how I work. I, I think you can tell through my streams and through my videos, uh, my product market fit is inspiring and educating people who want to learn. That's kind sure. of my product market fit. Yo guys, I think that was an incredible chat with Peter. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And lastly, again, you can check these conversations out on my YouTube channel, Hardcore Crypto, as well as on Peter's channel, Bite Size Bitcoin. Then you can learn more about cryptocurrencies and whatever is going on. Feel free to email me if you have any kind of questions. And that's about it. See you on the next episode. Just as a reminder, I always have to ask people to write me reviews on itunes if you have time just take a two minutes of your time go on itunes podcast the grave podcast and write me a review and give me some five stars like you do on uber okay that's gonna help me a lot guys okay with that i'll see you on the next episode guys 